Alright, so this is one of those problems that looks complicated but actually isn't. Uh, we have an, a centrifuge, which is an important tool for separating and analyzing proteins in biological research. And because of the enormous centripetal accelerations that can be achieved, the apparatus must be carefully balanced so that each sample is matched by another on the opposite side of the rotor shaft. So, for example, say this is the center of the centrifuge. We have our sample 1 here and our sample 2 here. Okay, so uh, failure to balance these two is a costly mistake. Any difference in mass of the opposing samples will cause a net force in the horizontal plane on the shaft of the rotor. So if, say, if two is uh, some is if a, of a greater weight than one, there will be a net horizontal force towards the shaft here. So suppose a scientist makes a slight error in sample preparation and one sample has a mass 11 milligrams greater than the opposite sample. So two is 11 milligrams, that's 11 times 10 to the negative 6 kilograms greater than uh, than the sample 1. Whatever. We don't know their individual masses, but we know by, by how much they are greater. So there will be a force uh, that is equal to force uh, is mass times acceleration. In this case, it will be centripetal acceleration. Centripetal is center seeking. There will be a force directed towards the center. Um, and this would be the mass times the velocity squared over r because that is what centripetal acceleration uh, means in terms of velocity and radius. Um, if the samples are 11 centimeters from the axis of the rotor, that means both samples are 11 centimeters from the axis of the rotor. That means our radius, uh, as, as the centrifuge goes around in a circle, Uh, is is 11 centimeters so we know our r is 11 centimeters we don't know what velocity is so that is what we need to find out first is is our velocity um, but how do we find that out what they've said is that the centrifuge spins at 7.3 times 10 to the 4 revolutions per minute so we have to first convert revolutions per minute into meters per second. How do we do that? We know one revolution is equal to the circumference of a circle, and the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So first we do 7.3 times 10 to the 4 times 2 into pi into r. And our r is, is known to us as 0.11 meters or 11 centimeters. And so the circumference of the circle, so it does 73,000, or 7.3 into 10 raised to 4, 73,000 revolutions per minute. So uh, we are just multiplying the circumference of the circle times the number of revolutions. But this is per minute, so we need to make this revolutions per minute into revolutions per second. So with this, we are converting our revolutions per minute into meters per second because 0.11 is meters. So once we do this calculation, we end up with uh, a value of 840 meters per second, which is our velocity. So our velocity is uh, 840 meters per second. We plug this value back into our force equation. Plug this value back into our force equation and we know our mass is 11, um, 11 milligrams uh, greater. So this mass would be 11 times 10 to the negative 6 kilograms. This, is, this will be our force. Uh, times velocity square, so 840 square, divided by uh, our radius, which is 0.11. So once we do this, uh, we end up with a value of, let me tell you, 40 squared divided by 0.11 uh, times 11 times 10 raised to negative 6. This is a force of approximately 71 newtons. So that is what the question asked us. What is the magnitude of the net force? F net on the rotor due to the unbalanced 
uh, sample. So there's a net force in this direction which causes the, uh, eventually will cause the lighter sample, um, I think, to, to, um, to break uh, the, in, in the centrifuge if, it's, if, it, if it is a test tube. I've seen it before. I've seen it happen before.